question yes, sure. asked by the honorable member for Zambez uh, East. Uh, he asked on the recovery of the monies from those that may have plundered, by his statement, the national resources. Uh, I must admit that there was a little bit of talking and I couldn't pick everything that the Honorable Member was asking and uh, I would request colleagues to allow me to fully understand so that I am relevant to the question asked. Uh, what I heard was uh, on the recovery. The recovery will continue because it is provided for in our laws. It will continue. It is found in the Anti-Corruption Commission Act uh, uh, in Section 8.0, which provides for a person who is found with money or property that are proceeds of some crime, a crime, to quickly declare, rather than allow litigation, a lengthy process to declare that truly they had done something wrong and willing to forfeit what had been acquired back to the state. Then that is entered, as far as I remember, as admission, and what was acquired is therefore forfeited to the state. This is the method that is being used. And we urge colleagues in this matter that if you know you acquired something in that manner, it's important, in fact, that you come forward because you know that that is not your property or your resources. Because if you are caught and you want to go to court, definitely this government will not start arresting people without investigation. You will know that the investigations have been done. And truly, you will have to explain to the Zambian people. But this is a provision which allows the state to return the money and put it back to the public use. Thank you. Thank you, Leader of Opposition. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity to ask a question. Madam Speaker, I'll start with an old uh, English adage, which says, on a good day, let only good words be spoken. Today is indeed a good day for us as Patriotic Front, and I would want to congratulate the people of Lusangazi the people of Kaumbwe for giving the Patriotic Front Party the vote. As leader of the opposition, Madam Speaker, I'm very happy that I'll be receiving yet another member of parliament to join us. It is indeed a very good day. And let only good words be spoken. Madam Speaker, my question to, the, to our Honour the Vice President. Your Honour the Vice President, we all know that civil servants play a key role in service delivery and indeed implementation of government programs. It's for that reason that uh, any uh, government would want to look at the welfare of uh, civil servants. It's a well-known fact, Madam Speaker, that um, civil servants were highly indebted. And for that reason, the then government of the Patriotic Front Party went into an arrangement of a debt swap. This was to create some relief on the civil servants. The government did not go in the, into a blame game or wanting to look at civil servants to have borrowed carelessly. Given the numbers of civil servants who were in that position, any responsible government needed to move in quickly to offer some form of relief. And after protracted discussions which lasted over two years, the civil serv serv servants, through their unions and government, arrived at that position of a debt swap. Your Honour the Vice President, when the new Don government came in, they suspended this program. 
and assured the nation that they had a better program, a, a, a sustainable program that would supersede or be superior or better to the program that was earlier entered into. What we have seen, uh, Your Honor, the Vice President, Your Honor, the Vice President, Order. we have seen a reversal of the earlier suspension on the deductions. It's very clear, Your Honor, the Vice President, that there may be no immediate solution to this problem. And we are calling upon Your Honor to tell the nation and the civil servant as to whether you will soon come up with a permanent solution as regards debt swap. Considering that, very soon the Minister of Finance will be presenting his budget, which budget will be implemented from the 1st of January. You require a motivated civil service to begin to implement your programs, the good programs of the New Dawn government. We do not expect the civil service that is demotivated, the civil service that is stressed, to implement these good programs. How soon is government coming up with a permanent solution on debt swap? I thank you. Her Honor the Vice President. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for the question that has been asked by uh, the Honorable Member from Porokoso and the leader of uh, of opposition. <laughs> the Honorable Member, Madam Speaker, shows a lot of compassion for the civil servants today. But uh, I must say that the indebtedness goes back all the years that the Honorable Member was in government. Yeah. Yeah. We answered this question before in this house, that we are going to re-look yes. at that program. The program, Honorable Member, did not involve only government and the civil servants. In fact, the civil servants were simply a third party in the sense that they were to remit the, the, the money. That is what they had. But they caused a lot of indebtedness also because of failure to remit. This is how government came in. But I will tell you that the actual agreement was between government and the workers. And the amount concerned was not in the way you politically wanted to put it. I will say we do understand and we definitely cannot implement in the budget that was left behind. The negotiations are continuing. It's a continuous thing. Year in, year out, there is a collective bargaining. The only issue that I'll talk about is the recoveries that we have made of the two months. The recoveries, Madam Speaker, cannot be done now because it was not spoken about. And therefore, this government, a listening government, has already signed with the unions that the recoveries for the two months will be paid back yeah. to the yeah. members yeah. until we find what the honorable member calls a permanent solution. But we are not going to go into this debt swap which was not even a swap. It was just to pay back to the owners. Yeah. Government was supposed to pay back what they owed to the workers. Yeah. For the rest, yes, it was purely campaign. Yeah. For the yeah. next, we have already agreed. Please don't bring things, maybe if you haven't been following. We have already signed. Government has signed yeah. with the unions of how we are going to proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable Member Oda, Oda, the Honorable Member for Mpika Central. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for according me this opportunity to ask your Honor, the Vice President, a question. Madam Speaker, Tazara workers play 
a key role in as far as the development of our country is concerned. The situation that faces Tazara workers, Madam Speaker, is a serious one. As I'm talking, Tazara workers are in two months salary arrears. To worsen the situation further, operations from Kapiri to Mpika, where I come from, and which houses the regional headquarters, have been suspended to allow for the renovation of Chambeshi Bridge. This is, this we have anticipated that by the time they finish, because they have 33 months for the uh, renovations, by the time they finish, Tazara workers would have been in five months salary arrears, suffering what like that in the their question? own country. Madam Speaker, mm -hmm. you don't have to argue me to ask a question. Let the speaker order, speak. Order, order. Can you quickly ask your questions? Because yes, Madam Speaker, I'm actually asking. I'm actually asking, Madam Speaker. Ma Madam uh, Vice President, does your government intend to aid Tazara in the meantime so that they are able to pay their workers' salaries in the face of the suspension of operations until they resume operations? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Her Honour the Vice President. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member seems to have a lot of detail. But uh, the issues of Tazara are historical. The issues of the indebtedness, the failures of this very important uh, uh, asset of the Republic of Zambia has been neglected for a long time. And uh, yes, by the, the, the outgoing government. Yes, in this house, Madam Speaker, in this house, there was a motion on the floor of this house where the Honorable Member for Kapiri then brought a motion in this house. I am even being told that the Honorable uh, Minister of Local Government seconded that motion so that the people of Tazara could be paid by this gov that government then. Yeah. They had issues. Yeah. They refused. Yeah. Now, now... Order, order. Do we want the Vice President to answer that question or we move on to another subject? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we give a chance to answer so that the people of Zambia can listen? Yeah. Now, the Honorable Member from Pika, has he come in, maybe he has no such history, that now yeah. he would want to put a blame on the government that has been in office for hardly two months. This government will work to revamp all that was neglected. But we are working within the budget of the Patriotic Front. And if there is no provision to do that, please understand, understand. We are a serious government and we will do everything possible. We appreciate, you don't have to ask a question which you know. You should be able to approach. Our budget is coming. We will see what will be available. But we will continue to work far much better with serious concern, not lip service to the people so that they hear you, that you are speaking for them. Please speak things that are of concern. This government will look at that as we continue. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have some order? Can we have some order? The owner of Order, please. The Honourable Member for Wacha. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And uh, I would want to thank uh, Honourable Vice President 
because Friday is a very important day for this house and for the people of Zambia because the questions are posed on the floor of the house on Friday entails or communication is given to the people of Zambia out there. Your Honor, the Vice President, in line with the recently held by-elections, local government and also one parliamentary by-election in Kaumbwe. I've seen, Your Honor, the Vice President, and I saw His Excellency, the, the President, traversing from Lusaka into Luapula, from Luapula into Northwestern Province, Northwestern Province into Eastern Province, Eastern Province into Central Province, and His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, including you, Your Honor, you are on record of saying this country, or when you came into office, you found no money in the coffers of this country. I'm just wondering, wondering Your Honor, all of a sudden, where the money has come from for his Excellency the President, our Honor, the Vice President, including ministers, they were what all is over. My question, Honorable Member. My question is every time when PF was in office, undertook a trip from Lusaka into uh, other provinces, it was regarded as the wasteful um, spending. Don't you think? His Excellency the President, our Honor the Vice President, ministers traversing around the country, especially to go and campaign, even for uh, councillors, for the first time, seeing His Excellency the President campaigning for a ward councillor in a ward. Don't you think, Your Honor the Vice President, that is wasteful spending, especially a nation, especially a nation, especially a nation, saying Order. that there is no coffers, in the, in the basket or in the coffers of this country. Don't you think that is waste of spending? And don't you think it is Honourable too early member, for can, can we UPND, Honourable UPND member, Honourable to member. lose elections? Barely in two months. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Take a seat, Honourable Member.